Big E, we're back. You build my browser, man. You got some fresh new blood today. I am. I, I gotta tell you guys, I am so excited about this. Uh, this is my client, Damien. We've been training together a little over a year now. Yep. Like that. Yep. And uh, he lives all the way out in Florida. Oh, good and, state. Yeah, good state. <laughs> but you know, flew across the country. I said to him, one of these days, I want to have you over here. Come to the Dragons Land on Beat on Beat Built by Brozo. And uh, we finally were able to make it true. He's competing in a, in a couple weeks at the Dexter Jackson Classic. Oh, nice. Yeah, so he's doing that show. Uh, we've already had some victories last year, so we're hoping to do even better this year. And uh, I love this guy. He's one of the most dedicated, passionate people you could ever have. I'm, I'm so honored to be his coach. He just, he loves the sport. He lives for the sport. So he's like a dream to train, and I'm so happy to have him here at Dragon Slayer. Damien, did you ever train with him in person or just through? No, first time. First oh, time. I can't wait to yeah. talk to you after this. No, no, <laughs> we've been working together for a year, but first time in person. It's yeah. a lot different from what I'm being oh, told. Man, so, yeah. yeah, I started like you, you know, just he was sending me to workouts uh -huh. online, and eventually we started training together, but much different to uh, here we are. having him hands on. So we're glad to have you. Thanks for coming all this way. Thank you so we're going to talk after the workout, okay? Absolutely. All Thank right. You. Okay, so for today's uh, workout with Damon, what we're going to be doing is chest. That's the body part he chose for today. And we're going to be doing one of my programs called FTX2, which basically means fast twitch exponential. Basically, what I'm trying to say with that is that we really want to target the fast twitch muscle fibers. And uh, the program that we're going to work today is going to really help to do that. So what I do is I start off the workout with a very high rep movement. It could be 20, 30, even 40 reps because what we're looking to do is we're looking to exhaust the slow twitch muscle fibers uh, because once they're exhausted, they'll stay out of play uh, to a large degree for the rest of the workout, increasing the activation of the fast twitch muscle fibers. So we start off, like I said, with that high rep movement. Then the second movement, what we do is we go to a heavier movement, somewhere around six to eight reps. We use either a very slow negative or a slow stretch, something to slow down the tempo and to really damage the muscle fibers. And we're gonna use an explosive positive, which helps to excite the central nervous system, which further enhances the fast twitch muscle fiber activation for the movements to follow. So after those first two movements, then we go to two more movements in about the 12 to 15 rep range, just using good strict form. And in those movements, we'll have those fast twitch fibers ready to go, highly activated, and that'll make the workout as a whole more productive for growth. Okay, so for the first movement, I wanted to use the Smith machine and do the guillotine press, which I love doing for the upper chest. And the objective on this movement is very, very high reps. So we were looking for about 25 or so repetitions. As you can see that we're using sort of a piston style, not moving too slow or fast, but keeping the reps going up and down without really stopping, keeping everything under control. Uh, and just looking to get a lot of blood in the muscle and again to really exhaust those slow twitch muscle fibers. As you can see, the bar is coming down just about to uh, the level of the clavicles. We're not locking out on the top. We're just going about two-thirds of the way up. Uh, great movement for the chest. Okay, so the next movement, uh, we did an incline press on one of my favorite machines here at the Dragon's Lair. Uh, the way we did this was to uh, utilize a four to five second negative on the way down, really traumatize those muscle fibers. We held the bottom position for just about one second and then we exploded to the top. So the goal here, like I said, is to uh, cause some uh, muscle fiber trauma by using those slow negatives. Then we stop at the bottom so there's no bouncing off the bottom. We hold that position for one second and then we explode to the top. And the reason we're exploding to the top, like I had mentioned earlier, is that we're looking to affect the central nervous system and really get those muscle fibers torched. Okay, we're staying uh, on that upper chest and we're using one of the movements that I, I guess I kind of invented. It's a low cable, close grip, uh, incline press. Uh, as you can see, we're using that the V handle they might use for close grip uh, pull downs. And we have the bench angled back, uh, maybe about, um, I don't know, to about 30 degree angle or so. And the idea here is to contract the chest right from the beginning. So you want to really squeeze the chest at the bottom of the movement. And then you want to initiate using the chest, not with the shoulders. It's very important not to initiate with the shoulders, but to use the chest to push the weight up and back. So it's at an angle, very, very unique angle for the upper chest. And to hold that squeeze throughout, get a good contraction at the top, 
and then a good controlled negative, squeeze at the bottom, excellent movement for the inner chest. Okay, so the next movement uh, is a unilateral movement. We're using another incline press machine, but this one is a seated incline press. So again, one arm at a time. And as you can see, I have Damien angled in the machine. He's kind of uh, cheating his body over to the same side of the hand that he's starting with and is kind of just angling his body just a little bit so it's almost as if he's not pressing straight up he's almost trying to press across his body of course that's not going to happen but with that angle he's going to get a better squeeze at the top of the movement get a really hard contraction in that inner upper chest again we're just using good strict form he's muscling the weight from the top to the bottom the bottom to the top he makes sure to get a good stretch at the bottom a good good squeeze contraction at the top and if you do this movement correctly you will really really feel the upper inner chest fibers just burning to the end of the movement an excellent movement for the upper chest okay so for the final movement I remained using uh, unilateral uh, I love using unilateral movements in training because I believe that uh, sometimes we have imbalances from one side of the body to the other so by working one side at a time you make sure everything is balanced and uh, everything stays strong on both sides of the body equally. So with this movement, again, we're just using good strict form. I made sure that he used a full range of motion. So in other words, I was telling him to really go to a full stretch, feel those fibers really, really pulling all the way from the sternum into the armpit, and then muscle the weight using the chest, not the front of the shoulder, and come across the chest and really get a hard contraction at the top of the movement before returning to a full stretch. Again, I had to keep reminding him not to let that shoulder come into place. So you want to keep your chest up high. You want to keep the lower back a little bit arched. And by doing that, you'll keep the shoulder out of the movement and get more upper inner chest. An excellent movement for finishing off a chest workout. Damien, how are you, my friend? How was the workout? Excited. Oh, the workout was awesome. Awesome. Honestly, you saw a, a different experience, another level. Uh, but yeah, feeling feeling great. Feeling uh, the pump. How did you like training at the Dragon's Lair? Man. <laughs> yeah, another experience, another level. Machines that I just saw on, on YouTube, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Things that I never saw in person. Yeah, crazy. So tell me, tell me the main difference that you noticed today between having him hands on, showing you the movement versus you know what you get online. Is that is that a big difference? Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the main difference is um, the you're nervous. I was nervous today. Yeah. Of oh, I didn't show. Yeah, I'm in. I'm, in. <laughs> I'm training with him. He's not only my coach. He's to me, he's a legend. Uh, I was when I was when I was a kid when I was. Man, 13, 14, I was reading in the newspapers, his, his, his uh, column, in magazines, sorry, he, columns. He's been around for a while. Oh, yeah, man. People just didn't know what he looked like. And, was, <laughs> and, and, and at that time in Argentina, it was magazine, you know? Is that where 13, you're from, 14, Argentina? From Argentina, yeah. Okay. I came here in 2019. Okay. And, uh, and today he's my coach. And not only my coach, I was training with him. Uh, he... And it's it's crazy because you didn't, you never realize what what you're building in other person in other territory, no matter the geography, no matter the time. 
he was building things on someone in the other corner of the world 20 years back that's how everything began that's awesome and now I'm here and I was training with him brother. how did you connect with, with Eric did you uh, I mean obviously you were reading his articles and everything but how did you actually that, hire that, him as a coach that's an easy answer um, when I came when I came to the to the US in 2018 I was not looking for a coach I was looking for him so I went to the internet and I said man I came here to you know to live my dreams because one of my dreams was living in the US I came here and I said I'm not going to look for a coach I'm going to look for him <laughs> yeah it was easy that's awesome <laughs> so I, I contacted him and, and, and my first contact was like okay what, what am I going to say because you know it, it's I want to say so many things, but it doesn't make sense now. <laughs> uh, but I was so excited, nervous, scared, uh, a lot of combina combination of feelings, you know? Yeah. But that's that's what I did. Just look for him on the internet. Boom. This is the coach I want. Well, how does that make you feel to hear that? <laughs> that's kind of humbling. Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm, I actually feel emotional about it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing to me. I mean, when I... I had no idea when he first contacted me. I just thought it was another guy who wanted a coach yep. and whatever and he contacted me I had no idea about the background story I had no idea that I'd been reading my articles and all of that stuff uh, and I think the first thing that he wanted to do I think was get on a Skype call right yeah. was a, so he wanted to actually do a Skype consult with me mm -hmm. um, not that many people start like that with me um, most people just you know write me an email or whatever and we go back and forth and they're like okay uh, so he wanted to do a Skype call so I got to really you know see his face and talk to him uh, and when I started learning what where this came from where this whole you know this all started I was like you know dumbfounded truth, truth, truthfully dumbfounded because you know yeah I was writing articles for all these magazines and you know I was uh, you know had books and this and that you know but you know it's kind of like you do it and then you put it out there but and you, you forget really, about it yeah. yeah you don't know who, even, who's reading you don't know it who's then. reading it yeah. you don't know who you're affecting you know and, and, and all these things you know especially with the with the age of the internet You know, it goes all over the world. You know, and, and but it's hard to think outside your box of your territory. So, you know, to know that I was, like you said, affecting somebody on, in a profound way in another part of the planet, um, yeah, we came was really humbling and amazing to me. And then, and then he, what he just said right here, he actually, uh, I think, last year after he competed in his first couple of shows. He put out a post on, on Instagram, and it was a long post, and it was thanking me and everything, and it was amazing. And one of the things he said was that I didn't, I was not looking for a coach. I was looking for Eric Broser. And, I mean, I think I had to fight back tears. Mm -hmm. I gotta be honest, I really did, because it was just amazing to hear, you know, and my life's work has been the fitness industry and bodybuilding, and of course I had, you know, I did what I did myself and competed and, you know, reached the pro level and the natural bodybuilding and did... But when I started coaching and started working with other people to such a large degree, you know, that's where I was really putting my heart and soul into it because now I have, I'm, I'm, I have somebody else's destiny and their dreams and their goals in my hands. So this is a very, very special thing, which is why from the beginning I said to myself, one day, and it was before I lived in Vegas, so I didn't really know, but once I got to Vegas, I'm like, I want this guy to come out here at some point uh, and be on Be Belt by Rosa because he's got a great story. He's a, and like I said, he's just a passionate. Well, man. he looks great. So yeah, yeah, know. looks great. <laughs> Damien, Damien, how? Um, so when you were in Argentina, were you doing bodybuilding already? Have you started there, or t how did the whole bodybuilding thing start? Yeah, of course, I started in Argentina. Okay, um, and who helped you? How did you learn? How did I learn? Um, the basics. Read my articles. No kidding. Ah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, no, actually, that's part of the truth. Yeah, that's part of the truth. Um, in the gym, when I started. We call that gym the, the Calabozo. <laughs> it's like a prison uh, for a very, it's a very, very old school place. And uh, most of the people training there, they're, they're bodybuilders. Uh, so that's, I was like, man, I like this. But when, you, when you're a kid, you, you don't realize what you're really doing. Because you know? mm -hmm. you're lifting. Yeah. Uh, at 15, okay, I want to look good for, you know, for the girls. The girls. Probably. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to the beach. Uh, but then you start to build something and uh, to me this is my, my, my perception based on my experience it's about structure and objectives uh, as I learned really quick that 
I was not building the body that I was looking because I was not having a, a, a structured mm -hmm. life. Uh, meals, rest, routine. a solid plan, yeah. a routine organization. So it took me, of course, years. It took me years. Um, but you know what? Going back to the uh, objectives and the structure, I started when I was a kid, as I said, 14, 15. And uh, what I came from, it was a, uh, it was like, a, man, bodybuilding, hmm, uh, nutrition, supplements. That was like a bad word, especially in my family. Um, and, and I'm gonna repeat objectives again, because I was sure I never doubt about my objectives, even for for, for my family. When you when you're a kid, when you're 15. Uh, if your father is telling you, hey, you're, and I, I don't want to talk about sexuality, but um, your father telling you, oh, you're, you're going to be homosexual. It's not for men, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not for men, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not for men because I was looking to, you know, to look good. Yeah. I was looking at myself in the, in the mirror, things like that. It's so weird. Shape my it's weird. Arms. A lot of people have a lot of. Uh, a it's weird to normal people yeah, of what yeah. the sport is. Yeah. Correct, and, and what we're doing it for yeah, yeah. and what it's all about. Correct, but when you're 15, when you're 16, it your is. father telling you that I means know. a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's different when you're 30 something. Yeah. Right. Uh, but you know what I did at that time? I said, "Man, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do, and I don't care anybody's opinion. Anybody." Here I am, doing what I love to do, living my life. But this is what I do 24 hours a day. And again, for, for, for if someone is hearing my words, objectives. Grab your objectives, dominate your destiny. And no, nothing, nothing should move you from your own objectives and, and, and your achievements. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you did a couple of shows last, last year, right? And then you have a show coming up in two weeks. Dexter, the Dexter, Dexter Jackson, Jackson right? What is the whole objective or goal with this whole bodybuilding thing? What do you want to do with it, ultimately? Huh, awesome question, awesome question. Again, um, I can't control what I do every single day. I can't control what's going to happen on the show. To me, uh, and this is, this, is a, this is a normal conversation with friends, you know, with my wife. Uh, they say, hey, nobody will see if you get two more grounds of cashews. Nobody will see you. No, nobody. But you'll know. <laughs> but I'll know. And you know what? I'm not going to go to that to sleep tonight knowing that I failed on my own plans. I always tell the coach, I follow the plan line by line. When I show up on, that, on the stage, I won. Because it's against me. Mm -hmm. it's, my, it's, it's against your mind. It's about building a solid spirit you know mindset yeah maybe next to me there's a there's a guy with 30 more pounds of muscle cool man uh, congratulations and i'm gonna applaud you but in my challenge for those four five six months whatever i won if i can get a pro card man i'll cry if i don't get the pro card i'll cry anyway because i did it i did my job that's awesome <laughs> that's a great way to look at it yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. He's uh, he's he's such a he's such good a attitude. Guy. Yeah, great, great attitude, and, and you know he's one of the most coachable athletes I've ever had, uh, and one of the most passionate athletes I've ever had. I mean, you just hear what he says right here, and you know I always echo those words. I say, so it's you against yourself. You know, as long as you're better than yourself, your last self. You've won. Yeah. How could you? You know, you can't say anything about that. Mm -hmm. You can't control what the judge is going to do. You that's can't right. control what the flavor of the day is that on that day yeah. um, so you could just go in and be the very best yourself and if you know the key is is if you know you have done everything your coach has asked you to do then you have no uh, regrets there's no getting on stage and going mm, if I mess this up yeah. that's why I play second or third yeah. if you know you've done it all you give it 100% you're a winner and, and I have zero doubt he is doing everything that I ask him to do to a T he even catches me I'll tell you like sometimes, you know, I always write out the diets, right? And then I'll, I'll put on top, you know, this is the amount of carbs you have for the day. And then he'll go through every single meal. And I, maybe I forgot to take five grams off of a meal that I meant to. And I'll be like, coach, coach, 
he writes me, he's like, he's like, on top it says I only get 165 grams of carbs, but in the, in the meals it says 170. What should I do? You know, instead of just eating the 170, I'm like, oh, yeah. sorry, he's I missed paying it. attention. Yeah. You know, paying attention. Yeah. So he's, he's he's very meticulous about it, uh, and um, it was great training him today. I mean, let me just say, let me just jump in. It was great training him today. Uh, always love training my athletes who I don't, you know, who I'm sending workouts to. It's always another level because I know he's doing what I'm asking him to do. But when I have him here, I'm able to get in his ear. I'm able to talk to him. I'm able to say certain things that are going to drive him to another level that I know he's going to carry with him back home yeah. and hear me in his ear still. Yeah. Uh, and I got to say, man, he took off his. I had him take off his shirt and pose a little bit, and even I was surprised because I see pictures and videos. Not the same. No, man. He took off his shirt in person. I'm like super happy about what he looks like because right away I said, "Wow, we beat last year. We beat last year." <laughs> And that's all I really care about. How long are you staying in Vegas, Damien? <clears throat> so I came today and yeah. I stay until this uh, Sunday. Okay, nice. Yeah. So a few days. Yeah, I came with my wife and my Good. little one. Good. Because, you know... Uh, you have to enjoy Vegas a little as bit. I said, this, is, yeah. this is my life. <laughs> if I can share with my, with my family. Yeah, that's my family great. supporting me. Man, and it's I always, something that I always say. Um, bodybuilders' wives, they all deserve in a cloud. Because we're not easy guys. <laughs> you know that very well. And if I can share that with my with my little one and my wife, brother, I, they are always be here with me. Oh, she's happy. She's laying by the pool right now. She's Correct. Good. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Not she's a bad life. She's, she's okay. And then, her, and then her guy comes by the pool, shredded to the bone, and everybody's looking at him. She's like, that's my man. <laughs> that's right. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming all the way from Florida. Uh, to Las Vegas to film with us today. You look great. I think you're going to do very well at Dexter's show. And uh, I'm sure it's not the last time we hear from you, man. Thank you so much to you guys. All right. Mm -hmm. Biggie, thank you. Thank you.